welcome to the channel. Farscape was a fantastic, visionary sci-fi show that ran for many seasons. In addition to featuring amazing alien creatures created by Jim Henson Studio, it also had some of the best characters in science fiction. That's why in today's video, we're going to be looking at why Farscape's John Crichton is the best sci-fi protagonist ever. Farscape was an amazing, really different sci-fi series. Ask any nerd to list their top five, and Farscape is likely to be there. Even though it first aired over 20 years ago, to this day it has a loyal and loving fan base. Its greatness was evident in many facets. It dared to experiment, to try new things, more so than any other show. Sure, SG-1 was funny with its quippy Jack O'Neill humor, but Farscape will have your eyes popping with the zany, side-splitting wackiness they'd routinely throw into the plot. And sure, Star Trek features plenty of aliens, and by that I mean obviously human actors with some makeup ridges pasted onto various parts of their faces, but Farscape got wild with their designs. The sets, the animatronics, the makeup, and the costumes, better than any other show in the genre. Crichton knew how to keep things fresh and make his crewmates feel special by giving them cool nicknames. Don't you tip me, Fluffy. Wildly differing personalities from completely different species, all thrown together on a fugitive prison transport, you can see how this would lead to some frayed nerves. Sparky. Sparky. Poor Sparky. Sparky. Spanky. Fluffy. Buckwheat the 16th. What better way to defuse the mounting tensions than to assign everyone clever nicknames based on earthling pop culture that no one on the ship other than Crichton would recognize or find in any way amusing? Come here, Toto. <laughs> See, that was one of the best aspects of Crichton's humor. He didn't give a crap that no one got the jokes and references. He was out solely to entertain himself. Hey, Buckwheat, how you doing? Buckwheat. It's buckwheat. Kind of like a space Andy Kaufman. And this is for Fluffy. And this is for Buckwheat. Uh, whatever that means. <gasps> like any true craftsman, Crichton loves his tools. True, some may think that he loved his trusty peacekeeper sidearm a little bit too much. Where's Winona? What? Winona. My gun. He took Winona. You're just crying because Winona jammed. Hey, Winona has been very reliable. It's not her fault that she jammed. Howdy, Bakesh. Meet Winona. Winona, don't fail me now. This, the name, the word. Winona, my pulse pistol. Ready? I just want Winona so I can get the hell out of here. Empty. Damn you. Winona would never do this because Winona is very reliable. You do not. But it's understandable. In the wild, unbalanced universe Crichton finds himself in, it's comforting to know that you can count on at least one thing unconditionally. And here's a quick reminder, if you enjoy the content I'm putting out, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps us out. Kind of early in the series, Crichton has to impersonate a peacekeeper in order to save Moya and its crew. Aaron is known to the bad guys, so she can only do so much, but humans and sebations happen to look identical, so John suits up in the uniform of a super special commando that they recently defeated. But the uniform isn't enough to sell the ruse. It requires acting the part as well. And when Crichton gets into character, it's amazing. Screw being an astronaut scientist, he should have been an actor. What are you doing aboard my vessel? This impersonation ploy gets used on numerous occasions by Crichton, and he always totally owns it. Also, it's just about that time in the show when he upgrades his casual wardrobe, getting away from the remnants of his schlubby old astronaut clothes, and delving more into badass leather trench coats and pants. Despite all the amazing special effects, sets, designs, etc., Farscape at Heart was a character-driven show. Each main character was distinct, complex and constantly evolving. Everyone, heroes and villains alike, were given their own deep backstories, their own episodes and plotlines to shine in, and their own evolving arcs. 
You have to hand it to a show that has a helium-farting, arrogant, domineering hand puppet become one of the most fan-loved of its entire cast. How do you escape the genetic CV process? I do not know. Rigel? What just happened? It's a perfectly natural bodily function. You fart helium? Iconic ships. Sure, the Enterprise, yeah, and okay, the Millennium Falcon. They're great, absolutely iconic, but really, Moya is better. Too bad Farscape isn't a more well-known show, because then there would be little debate on which is best. Moya is technically a member of the cast, rather than just a ship. And I don't mean in a figurative or personification sense, either. Moya is alive. She's a leviathan, which is akin to a massive, sentient, biomechanical space whale, evolved to be used as a space transport. She even gives birth to a little baby leviathan in one episode. Just like the rest of the main characters, Moya gets her own backstory and her own episodes. Scorpius is evil, driven, obsessive, relentless. He looks like a zombie at a leather daddy party. And as the show progresses and the characters develop, Scorpius almost goes from the villain to a sort of anti-hero. Ultimately, he's trying to do a good thing, certainly in his own mind. His end-all be-all goal is to save the universe from the Scarins. Being very much an ends-justifies-the-means kind of guy, he goes to any length to attain this goal. Funnily enough, he's actually half Scarin, which explains the whole zombie gimp look. See, his sebation half can't stand heat, and his scar inside is all about bringing the heat. So all his life, half his body's been trying to destroy the other half. So the leather daddy suit is necessary for his survival. Much like his body warring with itself, so does his psyche. Sebations are all about rigid discipline and control. Scarins are more animalistic fury. The constant struggle to keep a lid on his hated scar and rage is evident in every action. Crichton is not a soldier. He's not a martial arts master. He's a scientist, an astronaut, an explorer. At heart, he's just a big nerd. Thrown into the zany situation that he is in the first few episodes, following his failed Farscape mission in the pilot, he is anything but competent. Crichton is completely out of his depth. He's regarded as little more than a primitive by his shipmates, surrounded by warriors. The writers did a really excellent job letting Crichton evolve over time into eventually becoming a fighter and a leader. He's just about the most all-American hero you can imagine outside of maybe Captain America, which is quite an accomplishment seeing how un-American the show actually was. Farscape was originally produced for Australia's Nine Network, the majority of its cast are either Aussies or from neighboring New Zealand, and the show has a distinctly not American feel to it. But then comes Crichton strutting in, wearing his spaceman jacket with an American flag on it, throwing peace signs, acting like the most awesome doofus in the universe. He might as well be carrying an American flag and chanting USA. I'm superior! Humans are. No Doctor Who, Malcolm Reynolds heroic stoicness when it comes to getting the girl for John Crichton. No willy-nilly gallivanting about and sampling of the galaxy's wares like James T. Kirk. John and Aaron's love story is one of the best in sci-fi. It wasn't a B story or a sideshow to the main plot. It was thoroughly interwoven, even becoming the framework upon which most of the other plot in action occurred. And this worked really well because they were such an effective team. You don't just protect me. We protect each other. John being all crazy pants and heroic, Aaron standing by his side, shining with terrifying martial competence and holding a big-ass gun. Aaron's son, as a failed peacekeeper, was a member of the Sebation race. This is a cold, aloof, militaristic culture that has no word for compassion. Nothing would have progressed anywhere if John hadn't been so bombastically emotional and so relentless in his pursuit. Absent also was the tired TV trope of will-they-won't-they, they, that tired Ross and Rachel vibe. 16 episodes in, they banged. There were 72 episodes left in the show. What could the writers possibly do with that? Well, the characters, they progressed, they talked, they ignored each other, they fought each other, they fought together. Their relationship grew, it shattered, and then it built back stronger. 
This is a level of depth you don't often see in television shows. Number one reason why Crichton is the best sci-fi protagonist ever, he's batshit crazy. Much of his story arc involves him going a bit insane. This evolves over many episodes and multiple seasons. To be fair, a large portion of this descent into madness is due to the evil machinations of Scorpius, who actually puts an AI fragment of his own psyche into Crichton's brain early in the series. Then again, you can only put so much blame on Harvey. With Crichton, you get to viscerally experience the absurdity of his situation. I got great eyes. They're better than 2020, and they're blue. Earth astronaut finds himself on a living whale prison ship surrounded by freaky Jim Henson aliens pursued by a relentless madman. You see the pressure building and the stress piling on episode after episode. And the best part of all is it's absolutely spectacular. Ben Browder is purely awesome in this role. What are you doing? Uh, oh, come on, man. I'm. They're here. They're right here. You are mentally damaged. His comedic delivery, his swagger, his over-the-top personality, his wet puppy dog blue eyes, it all comes together to make Crichton someone you cannot look away from. He owns whatever room he's in. He leads the wacky crew. He gets the girl. He infuriates the stiff bad guys with taunting banter. Simply put, Crichton is the best. Dargo, we're in a window. And that does it for our video today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And otherwise, have a nice day.